In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Palm Sunday is unusual in the Christian calendar because unlike any other Sunday, we have two Gospels. The first one uh, for Palm Sunday, we have the Gospel of the Liturgy of the Palms when we remember Jesus riding in triumph into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey's colt, um, surrounded by the crowds. Uh, Actually, we don't know how big the crowd was of his disciples, uh, shouting uh, for joy uh, about him coming in on the foal of an ass, uh, surrounded by palm branches and people's coats uh, and garments being thrown so that the little colt could walk not on the ground, not on the rough ground, but on palm branches and on the colt. So he comes in to triumph. Blessed be the king, the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Coming in triumphal entry into Jerusalem as the coming king. And then, of course, we have uh, later in the Eucharist, the gospel of the passion. Uh, Jesus rejected, Jesus crucified, Jesus dying on the cross. A very sad and poignant gospel, the story of Jesus' ministry and life coming to its brutal end, again watched by some of his disciples, including some of the women, all their hopes dashed. Sorrowful, brutal with the one Roman centurion who perhaps knew nothing whatsoever about Jesus until the time he was in charge of putting this man and the two others to death. But seeing the darkness overshadowing the land, hearing his last great cry, proclaiming, truly this man was the Son of God, brought some kind of faith in this man whose execution he had carried out. But that didn't alter the fact that this man had died. A deeply sorrowful, gruesome remembrance. And yet, it is the heart of our faith because without the death of Jesus, we would not be in a position next Sunday to be celebrating the astounding core of the Christian faith, which is the resurrection. Today is not the day to preach on the resurrection. But without the reality of the crucifixion, not as a theological fact, not as a what did it mean, what did it mean for God, what did it achieve, but as a brute fact, the end of Jesus' life, the end of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, who was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, swaddled in Bethlehem, taken as a refugee into Egypt and brought up in Nazareth, who spent time lost, well he wasn't lost, but he was lost from his family in Jerusalem after his first going there for the festival after his bar mitzvah. And then spending time perhaps learning to be a carpenter, although we don't know, we just presume. And then becoming a rabbi and gently encouraged by his mother to do his first miracle. And then setting out after his baptism by John to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Proclaiming that the kingdom of God was there in their midst, here, now. Proclaiming it healing people, casting out demons, preaching the good news of the kingdom, 
that God was in their midst, healing and forgiving and making relationships right. And yet, all coming seemingly to nothing, dying just like every other human being. And sometimes because we preach about its significance, we miss its real significance in that it happened. Our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, breathed his last on the Roman cross and died. And it's because of that that next Sunday is something to celebrate, something to wonder about, something that will never cease to take my breath away, something that will continually be something that is worth preaching again and again and opening our hearts and our minds for. But this Jesus who was crucified ate and drank and appeared to his disciples and sent them to tell this amazing story. Amazing because he had been very, very, very publicly executed by this centurion who, in today's gospel, because of the manner of his death, had been convinced he was the Son of God. Yes, it is right to reflect on what the significance of Jesus' death is. But we mustn't be too quick to jump to the theology and miss the reality of the normalness of Jesus' death. Because not only does it make his resurrection all the more incredible, it also offers us the reality of Jesus alongside us in our human sorrow as we too grieve, as we too approach our human end. Jesus knows exactly what it's like to be us as we face difficulty, as we face the fear of illness, as we face the fear of pain as we face the fear of death. He has lived our human life and drunk its dregs. And that is comforting at a time like this. He understands us. And so as we listen to the Gospels today, as we turn to him in prayer, we know that he understands He has lived our life right until its end. And just because he was a first century Palestinian man and not a 21st century British person doesn't mean to say he doesn't understand what it is to feel our emotions, our hurt, our sorrows, our fears. So as you face whatever it is you will face this week, Know that the Saviour, whose death you have heard about today and who you will relive again this week, is standing alongside you in your troubles as well as in your joys and will never leave you 